Hi everyone, welcome to the first video in a series of installing accessories on our MG ZS EV. Today we're going to run through installing mud flaps or mud spats as an accessory after we've bought the car. Stay with us. Hi everyone, welcome to Electric Car Australia, the YouTube channel for Australians wanting to know a little bit more about electric cars and sustainable living or those that are just about to make the leap into purchasing an EV for the first time. So look, today we're in the wooden toy workshop. So this is uh, our shed in the backyard. We've got a forecast 33 degrees here in Brisbane today. So we're gonna make this video nice and early in the morning before it gets uh, rather hot in here. And um, you guys will see the big industrial fan there. So that's uh, one of a couple that we fire up once it gets um, a little bit bit warmer um, but let's get into the reason we're here today so what we're going to go through today is uh, fitting the mg zs genuine accessory mud flaps or mud spats i believe um, they're called some accessories for the car after we purchase it um, the mg dealer had to get them in some of them had to come all the way from china so it has taken quite a while um, we ordered these in uh, november late november 2020 when we picked the car up and we've only just received them mid-March and we're still waiting on a few other bits and pieces. So we've decided to break the videos up into individual small short videos um, installing or fitting each of the different accessories. So today we're looking at the mud spats. So this is it, Saic Motors, obviously um, the parent company that make the MG or own the MG brand now. So that's a Chinese company. Now, this is the box. So we've got our hard plastic mud spats. So there's a couple there, a um, couple more. So we've got left and right, front and back, and we've got a little bag of screws. No instructions or anything. So I assume that they expect the dealers to fit most of these, but hey, this is a really easy job. Um, so we'll run through it with you guys um, today. So just to show you some of the things that I've got in case, soft spongy knee pad um, protector thingy to put on the floor just for a bit of comfort. Um, now, I've got all this gear here. I don't know whether we're gonna need it all. Um, so once I start the first one, um, we'll come back to you guys and we'll let you know. But basically in case um, we need to drill the holes into the um, plastic surrounds here where it goes on, um, so that one obviously fits in, in there, and I'll show you the screws in a sec. We've got a small drill. Um, so we've got our electric drill. If we need to drill a pilot hole, we'll use that. And then we'll screw it in manually with the old screwdriver. Um, I'm not a big fan of using the uh, electric screwdrivers too much because sometimes they can over tighten it and, and pull the threads. Um, however, We'll just play it by ear. So we might be able to put the screws in with this guy without using a pilot hole and just be very careful we don't over tighten them. Or we might have to use a pilot hole and in that case I'll use the old um, handheld screwdriver. Now what I'm going to do before we put these on is I'm going to protect them. Um, and you might have seen our previous video on detailing the car. Um, so I'm going to actually put some UV protectant and conditioner on them before I fit them. Um, we've already done all this other plastic trim here, so that will just protect them. As you can see, there's already some marks and, and sort of scratches just from in the box. Um, so we'll see if we can sort of clean, polish those off, um, protect it and, and put it on. Now look, these are nothing fancy, um, just uh, they're a flexible plastic, they, not rubber, but yeah, feel a little bit like rubber. Um, but look, they just stop the, um, the stones and the, the mud and, and slush uh, going up under the, under the car. So that's all the gear. Um, let's have a little bit closer look at where we'll be fitting them. So as I mentioned, um, fitting the mud spats, and look, this is a personal choice. You don't necessarily need to. As I mentioned in the detailing video, this is a, is a plastic sort of protective coating which will stop the mud and slush and, and stone chips hitting your um, sheet metal, painted sheet metal. Um, however, it's a personal thing. I, I actually prefer to have these on. 
I don't think they're going to affect the range of the EV that much. Um, I've watched some other videos done by other EVs, um, particularly Bjorn, Bjorn Nyland over in Norway, and he doesn't believe on his Model 3 that it affected the, the range. Um, so look, that's how they fit on there. It just provides that little bit of extra protection. And if we bring it around to the front, Okay, so that's where they'll fit. Now you'll notice there is one screw there, so that's a, a star-headed screwdriver or Phillips head. Um, so we'll take that out and that goes into this slotted screw hole there in the mud flap. So that will be the first one we'll put on. So we'll take that out, we'll put it into that slotted spot and that'll allow us to have a little bit of movement. And once we've got that on, we can drill our other two. So there's two other holes there. Um, and that'll allow us to fit it. So that's good that that one's an existing one, gives us a starting point. We can pop that on, position it, and then as I said, whether we use the electric screwdriver or whether we drill a pilot hole, I'll decide that and we'll pop that on. You'll notice we've also got the wheel turned at full lock. So that just gives us a little bit more space to work and we'll do that on the other side as well. Okay, so, Let's uh, give these a bit of a clean and a um, polish up with the protectant and get underway. Okay, so just to show you guys the uh, difference between the front and rear mud flaps. Um, so this one's the front one. So three holes, this is your existing hole, which we're gonna take that screw out in a minute. They're your two new ones. So they come in the little pack of screws. So you get eight screws. So that's the front one. The difference in the back one is it has this underneath screw. So the back one actually has um, two existing screws. So that one and that one in, in the car. Um, so yeah, you'll notice the difference there that it's got that screw that comes up from underneath. So let's remove this existing screw down here. and we can put our first one on. So just to bring you guys in a little bit closer. So that's it, that's where the existing screw hole was, that one there. And we're gonna fit this nice and easily on there. So as you can see, this is a really easy job to do. No problems about doing it yourself. So let's leave that nice and loose. So that's got some movement there. And let's position it nice and tightly. Actually, we'll do a little bit tighter than that. Yep, there we go. And I'll just bring the camera around so you can see here. So that gives us a little bit of movement and the light's just in the wrong spot. But you can see that we've got quite a bit of movement. We can move that around again and just get it nice and flush there. So let's try firstly, let's get our first screw out and we'll try it with the electric screwdriver, just very carefully. So there's your screws. So they're all the same size. So we don't need to worry about different sizes. Let's put our electric screwdriver on forward and just very carefully, because as I said, I don't want to over tighten that. Make sure that's all positioned well, positioned nicely. I can feel that there. Now that's just good there, so let's see how we go.
Yeah, now look, that's, that's okay. So we don't need to pilot drill that. But yeah, if you're using one of these, just be very careful, um, variable speed. So just very careful that you don't over tighten it. This appears to be working okay. So we'll continue with that. There we go. And actually that one's a bit hard to get into. So I might, let me go get a stubby screwdriver for that one. Wouldn't you know it, the kids have got both my stubby screwdrivers. So if you don't know what that is, it's a screwdriver with a short little handle in it and it's really short. So the entire screwdriver is about that long. My Phillips and my flat bladed stubby screwdriver are missing. Um, really popular with the kids. They like the little short ones. So yeah, that's not gonna work. So this, is as close as I can get in, so I'll just carefully, that's what I didn't want to do, because I don't want to chew the heads out in that. Okay. So let's check that. Look, that's nice and tight. Uh, like I said, these aren't actually um, hard. They're, they're a little bit soft, a little bit of give, so that's good. Um, so yeah, look, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And when I go and find my stubby screwdrivers, I will just tighten that one up a little bit. But yeah, look, first one on. Looks good. Okay, so I'll go around and do the others. I um, might just show you guys doing a, a back one. Okay, so here we are at the back one. As you can see there, it's the different one that's got the um, screw in the bottom as well. So hopefully you guys can see that. That's your one existing screw there. And I realize the sun's a bit glary outside. So that's one existing screw there is gonna come out. And then up under here, that's your other one there that's gonna come out. So look, the front of the car with the mud flap on, I don't think makes that much difference. You can just see it there. But the back, I think they actually look a lot better with them on. So that's it there with nothing. And this will be it with it on. So I think it just finishes them. I don't know what it is, but I think it just finishes them a little bit better than just seeing your um, tire tread. So let's get on with it and um, we'll show you guys the finished product. Well, here we are fitting our back mud, uh, mud flaps or mud spats. And I jinxed it by saying it wasn't rocket science and it was quite easy to do earlier. So the issue we've faced at the back here is we can't get in here. So the distance between our tire and the back um, bumper bar doesn't give us enough for our screwdrivers. So I went and located my stubby screwdrivers. So this is the one we need. This is a Phillips one, but when we try to get in there, it's very tricky. So as you can see, we can just get that existing one. So that one there, so we can take that one out. However, with the mud uh, flap, we need to put one in down there. And because we can't get enough pressure with the handheld one, we need to get the electric driver or a drill in there. And as you can see, there's absolutely no way we're gonna get that in. So you've guessed it, we've had to take the wheel off. So that's turned into a little bit um, bigger job than we thought. Now look, you potentially could muck around and try and get those in without taking it off. But look, I've got all the gear, so I'm gonna take it off and we'll quickly show you guys how to do it. Because the MG doesn't have a jack in it, so I'm not sure about um, overseas models, but the Australian MG doesn't have a jack in it because it doesn't come with a spare tire or spare wheel um, as standard. So there's no jack and there's no wheel brace. So there's not a spanner to get the wheel nuts off. So to do that, luckily I've got all the, the gear. So there is our trolley jack. Now, again, normally you'd put a, uh, the jacking points on the car uh, under here. So where you can see that little cutout 
under the frame of the vehicle there. That would be normally your lifting point. So when you go into the uh, mechanic or into the service center, um, they put it up on the hoist. The hoist goes on there and there's four points. There's another one up the front and the same on the opposing side and they lift the vehicle. Now I tried that um, using that one with the trolley jack and I'll put a graphic in, but basically because of the positioning of the car, it raised this right up and the wheel was still on the ground. So I've had a good look underneath the car. Here's my little trusty mechanics creeper. So we can lie on this and get under the car. Now apologies guys, the, the camera's gonna go all over the place. But just quickly looking under the car here, the strongest point that I could locate was directly under that spring mount there. So that's the only one that we could get to. Um, we couldn't get over under that one. That would have been my first preference. Um, there's a nice strong point over in here, but we couldn't get the jack in there. It hits the rim. You obviously wouldn't want a jack on the bottom of your shock absorber, so that one, leave that one alone. You wouldn't want a jack on the bottom of that because you'll compress that. So yeah, that was the strongest point. So directly underneath your spring, um, that's the jacking point I'm using. Again, that cross member over there, which is like a rear axle, it's actually a vertical piece. So potentially you could bend something there. So long story short, that's the best place to jack. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to loosen the wheel nuts before we um, lift the wheel off the ground and then we'll jack it up and we'll take the wheel off. So I'll just um, talk you through uh, this one. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get the wheel nut caps off. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. Now these are just plastic. So um, there is a little thing, you can buy a little hook or you can make up a little fine piece of wire. You can hook it in under there and pop them off. A couple of other ways, obviously a little rag to protect your rim. You can just tuck that under there and gently leverage them off. So that's all they are. They're a little plastic silver cap and you can see there's a little lip there. So you can actually just get something and leverage it out. Um, they are plastic, so be careful with them. Another way you can try some long nose pliers uh, and just carefully put them in there and leverage it off. Now I tried that with a little bit of rag on there and the rag's too slippery, they won't come off. Um, so yeah, you can just do it like that, but just again, be careful you don't damage that. So we'll go around and pull those off. Okay, so that's our plastic wheel caps off. Um, so there's our studs in there. So we've got a 17 millimeter um, socket. So again, if you don't have one of these, you'd need to buy one of those, or you might, you might have a wheel brace out of another car or an old car. So whatever it is, it needs to be uh, 17 millimeters. And this one's called a breaker bar. So basically all that is long, rigid handle that gives you some leverage. So before we lift it off the ground, we'll just quickly go around and loosen these. Now, the MG manual, I don't think, um, gives you the torque of the nuts. So just take note of how much force you need to actually undo these um, because I'm not gonna go to the trouble of getting a torque wrench to put them back on. So you can just feel, once you loosen those, um, the torque that's in those. And I actually done that one in the wrong pattern while I was talking. Um, but you should always, uh, loosen opposing ones. So wherever you start, start here, loosen that one slightly, then this one, that one, that one, and that one. So you don't go around like that. So you just do opposing. So wherever you start, just do opposing ones. Now look, they're just cracked loose. Um, they're certainly by no means loose loose. They're just cracked. Now we'll go around and we'll jack the car up. So jack it up just enough so the wheel's off the ground, which it is. And I should have mentioned the opposing wheel, so the diagonally opposite uh, front wheel, I've chocked it, so front and back of the wheel, just put some chocks under it there. Obviously these have um, electric handbrake on the back and you've got electric front wheel drive, so it shouldn't go anywhere. And I do have it in a flat garage, um, but safety first, always just chock that opposing front wheel. Okay, so now we can loosen these a little bit more. 
careful not to chip the paint on the rim. Okay, so they're nice and loose. We'll take our breaker bar off, get a shorter extension bar. Now what I generally do is leave one of these top ones in till the last thing. So let's leave that one. That one's right out. So there's your stud, nice chunky size stud. And by leaving your top one in, that just makes sure your wheel's not going to fall off or do anything crazy. There you go. So as you see, the top one, wheel still sits nice, steady there. So now we can get serious and take this one off. And you'll see the wheel slightly tipped out. And it should sit there. It should still sit there. But again, just to make sure. Okay, now we'll pull it off. I just weighed the other one when I had it off. These are 21.6 kilos, so they are quite heavy. Um, so when we're talking about EVs, obviously every little bit of weight helps. So um, yeah, these are quite a chunky tire and wheel. So um, yeah, just out of interest, 20, nearly 22 kilos per tire and wheel combination. Okay, so there we go, wheels off. So while we got it off, let's just quickly show you guys a little bit. And we're going off on a tangent here now compared to fitting mud flaps. Um, but just to show you guys, that is, that's your brake caliper there. That's your brake disc, obviously. Um, your brake pads are down in there, either side. That's your handbrake servo motor. So that's the electric motor that um, puts on your handbrake and not sure what that little electrical cable is um, down there. Goes in, probably sensing the handbrake's on or something. So yeah, look at the end of the day, that's not a bad looking, got the SAIC motors stamp on it, on the alloy housing there. Not a bad looking little get up. It's, um, it's small, it's compact, but it, look, it does the job. There's your rear axle and spring. That's a little bit of a silly design, so you can see that that there is open, so that's catching stones, etc. It's got a little hole in the centre to let the water out, obviously. Um, but yeah, if they had to close that up a little bit more, because um, I know in Australian roads, dirt roads, that's going to get little stones and that, and you can see there's a few in there already. But look, other than that, all good. So let's get on to fitting this last mud flap here. Okay, we've just pulled the roller door down, so hopefully you guys can see a little bit better. Um, so look, that's where our mud flap's going to go on. So what we need to do is pull off this screw here. So this is one of our existing ones, and we'll make sure we're in reverse. Comes off nicely. And there's one up under here. Okay, that's it. Now be aware guys, the screw sizes are different. So that's the existing ones on the top and that's the new ones that come with the mud flap kit underneath. So they are slightly different size and they're also a different thread. So just make sure the two existing ones that you pulled out, you keep separate from the new one we're gonna put in. So now this is the simple part. The tricky part was taking the wheel off. So give that a wipe. That is literally going to go on there. So one of our existing ones in that top hole. And it's good that these existing ones go in because they, they actually help you line it up. So get our trusty little stubby one now that I found. So just tighten that up finger tight. Here's the one to go underneath. And apologies, I can't move the camera because it's charging, but it is just straight up underneath here so we're going to come in from the back here line that up now we can tighten that one reasonably tight let's tighten this one reasonably tight now right so that leaves us with our one new one in the middle get our trusty electric screwdriver reverse it to forward Center that there. So 
So I'll just see if I can bring that camera for you guys. So that's it there. Literally just centered in the center of the hole and gently, gently put that in. Now I have noticed, if you guys can see there, that inner lining, there's a bit of a gap there. So that's going to catch stones and rocks and things. Um, there we go, hopefully you can see that now. That's going to catch some stones and rocks and things. So what I might do is actually take that screw back out and we will pilot hole drill through this sort of felt foam backing because what that screw is doing, the screw's gone into the mounting plastic here but it's actually pushing that away and like I said, that is going to catch a lot of rubbish down in there. So let's do that. Well, that was a little bit trickier than we thought. So yeah, this inner um, sheet or um, protective felt, when we were screwing in, it was actually pushing it back. Um, so I had to elicit some help from the wife. I actually climbed up underneath, put my arm in behind the um, bumper bar and just pushed a socket so it wouldn't drill into my finger, pushed a socket in behind there and I got her to uh, screw that in. So we put a very small pilot hole, screwed that in. Okay, so here's our wheel so we'll just sit that in there for the moment so again these are quite heavy so line your stud wheels up a little bit that looks about right sit him on there pop your foot get one of these top ones in they're a little bit countersunk, so they're a bit tricky to get in with your hands. So we'll just carefully use the socket. This is pretty straightforward, guys, but I thought I would just quickly show you this. I'm sure most of you have changed a tyre before. But yeah, it is interesting that uh, the modern cars, a lot of them obviously don't have spare wheels. So yeah, no jack or wheel brace. So we'll just do these finger tight. And then we'll let our jack down and we'll tighten them up. So as I mentioned, I'm not torquing these. I'm not sure of the proper torque. If you just do it similar to what it was, or if you want to chase down the torques that's required. I do have a torque wrench um, to set the torque. And what I mean by torque, if you don't know, torque means the tension on the, the bolts. So the longer this breaker bar is, the more careful you have to be because when these are really long, you can put a lot of downward pressure and force on that, and it is actually possible to break these studs off. Some people go nuts and, and over tighten these, thinking the wheel's going to come off. Um, that's not the case. A little bit of pressure, and that's very similar to what came off. Down the track, I probably torque them up. I would take it for a little short drive, come back, check them again, and then once you've done that, pop your little plastic caps back on. Well, there we are, everybody. We've fitted our four mud flaps. So let's do a quick walk around and have a look. So there's the, from the rear, I actually think that looks uh, quite smart on the rear. Just, just sort of finishes, finishes them off. There's the one on the passenger side there. Passenger side front. and the driver's front. So yeah, look, they, they fit nice and neat. So guys, that was the genuine MG ZS. Um, same as the ZS, the EVs aren't any different. Um, you can expect to pay around $60 for those from your dealer, so that's around that price. Of course, you can get um, cheaper aftermarket, non-genuine ones off eBay, Amazon, Alibaba, etc. Um, but $60 is, is not too bad for the genuine part and you know they're going to fit um, nice and neat and they've got the little MG um, badge on them. Now um, we had a couple of screws left over so they provide eight, we only needed six. 
Um, so that's great, we got a couple of spares. And one thing I should have mentioned, probably another option instead of taking the back wheels off, you could have potentially used one of these little right angle screwdrivers. So not everybody might have one of those, but if you do, that allows you to get into really tight little spots. Um, so still would be a little bit tricky with that, but if you don't have the jack and the wheel braces and all that sort of stuff to take the uh, tire off, that could be an option as well. So to let you guys know, it took me about an hour all up and that included um, looking for my couple of little stubby screwdrivers and also um, taking the two back wheels off, fitting the mud flaps and putting them back on. So um, if you didn't do that and you had one of these and got it to work, you'd be probably down to around 40 minutes or so. So not a bad little time frame to fit your four mud flaps. Now we've got some other, this is the first video in a series, we've got some other ones coming up. Um, we've obviously got uh, some floor mats, dash mat in the car, so we'll um, do a little short video on those um, shortly in the next few weeks. And also we're fitting a um, chrome, it's actually chrome plastic trim to the um, back of the uh, boot lid here, or the um, trunk lid. Um, so we'll do a little video on that one. Um, I'm not a fan of the Chrome Delete. You hear a lot of Tesla um, owners talking about the Chrome Delete, where they've actually deleted the, the Chrome and made that black. Um, I'm not actually a big fan of that. I think the white cars look good with a little bit of Chrome um, offset with the, the black plastic. So yeah, looking forward to getting our little Chrome trim on there. And, um, and we're still waiting for some little kick plates that go on the bottom of the doors. So um, they're still coming from China. Uh, again, genuine part. Um, so here in Australia, it takes quite a while to get those. So they're on their way. And we'll do a short video on fitting those when we get them as well. That's it, guys. Thanks again for watching. We really appreciate it. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. Um, only about 14% of our viewers actually are subscribers. YouTube puts a lot of emphasis on channels that have lots of subscribers. So the little ads that pop up while the YouTube channels are on, if you've got over a thousand subscribers, uh, YouTube actually pay a very small amount of the money they make from advertisements to the um, producers of the videos. So we're only up to 500 subscribers. So once we get to our thousand subscribers, we will start to earn a very small amount of money from the ads. So unfortunately we've only got 15% of the people that actually watch our videos click that subscribe button. So we'd really appreciate it if you, you could uh, click that subscribe button. Nice, quick, easy and free way to help us out. If you'd like to help even more, um, please make a small donation via PayPal. Um, we'll include a link in the description section to that one. We'd like to make heaps more videos, but unfortunately, yeah, YouTube doesn't pay the bills, so we need to um, have a job. Okay, thanks again, guys. Really appreciate you watching. Share with your friends. Hit that bell icon so you're aware of when we upload a new video. Stay safe, and we'll talk soon. Bye.